The Z fighters had recovered from the deadly battle and once more found themselves in a state of peace. Goku and Vegeta remained vigilant with their training, spending the majority of their time at Beerus' planet as usual. This time, they were accompanied by Broly. Present Gohan and Piccolo also kept up their training. Piccolo more so, as Gohan was on the verge of a new discovery, what he dubbed as being the Saiyans, and spent the majority of his days cooped in his study. The future fighters likewise kept training frequenting their original future home, ensuring future Bulma was okay and there was no threats to Earth. Sometimes they would live there for months, but Bulma always encouraged them to return to the past, as she could tell that was truly their home. When in the past, Trunks lived at Capsule Corp, and Gohan stayed at a small capsule house, courtesy of Bulma, in the mountains near where Piccolo lived. More often than not, it was Pan and even Bra who could be found with the two future boys, as the two other Saiyan boys had school and some secret superhero obligations to tend to. According to little bra, future Trunks was way cooler than her own brother. Pan didn't hold the same thoughts about her future father, but she did enjoy the fact that this version of him had much more free time to spend with her. Present Gohan was aware of how much time Pan enjoyed spending with his other self. On one hand, he loved how his daughter had a companion when he was caught up in research, and he knew how his counterpart had been stripped of having this future, so he was thankful he could let him experience a small glimpse of this life. Not an angry or violent pain, but a sad which he tried to ignore and not confront due to how it would affect the other two. It could wait until after he published the paper. Future Gohan, as promised, also spent a lot of time training and mentoring Broly. He knew exactly what it was like to have not only a loved one put so much faith into them, but to be burdened with such indescribable rage. The two became close friends. They were sort of loners whose power was so intertwined with their emotions, to the point where their anger could manifest into pure power. They were both quiet, gentle individuals who had a strong love for nature. Future Gohan was currently at Beerus' planet with the others. Him and Broly had just finished battling, with Broly coming out victorious. Future Gohan had been trying to train himself to access the beast's form, but it was so difficult for him, having more trouble than Trunks ever did. Broly and Gohan laid on the grass, catching their breaths. They discussed some battle strategies before their conversation shifted. Broly recalled some stories about his past battles on Vomp and how he would play and train with his first friend ever, Ba, gesturing to his green fur, before lamenting on how his father didn't approve of their friendship and shot the beast, cutting off its ear, causing him to never trust Broly again. It was then when Gohan realized the sheer depths of the cruelty which Broly had endured through his life, but despite all that, his loving and caring nature remained. Gohan smiled at Broly's story before telling his own about a purple dragon which resided close to his mountain home. Broly listened with intrigue, but all this talk about Ba left him feeling down. It was then when future Gohan spoke, telling him how it had been some time since he last saw Icarus, and that he should come with him on his next trip to the future. Broly replied that he would like that. Trunks was determined in mastering his beast form fully. Even if he could access it at will now, he needed to get used to it. It was so taxing to use and could only be used in short spurts, which, while okay, is an issue which would come to bite him in the back if he didn't fix it now. Immediately, he was greeted by Bra, who ran towards him into his arms. She was still very small, only a little bit younger than Pan, but that didn't stop her boundless energy. In this timeline, thanks to the presence of more fighters, Bra was also also more interested in fighting at a young age. But unlike Pan, who was more tomboyish, Bra enjoyed learning how to control Ki, and her martial arts had a more elegant touch. Vegeta was over the moon by this, even if he didn't express it. She continued to tell her older brother about all the time she spent with Pan at Piccolo's house, and how he was teaching them how to fly. Meanwhile, future Gohan and Piccolo began their meditation. It's important to note that in this timeline, another huge difference is how all the fighters are stronger than their original counterparts, meaning that all the data gathered by the Red Ribbon Army was also of higher quality. In the time after the battles against Moro, Piccolo wished to have his potential unlocked so he could train with future Trunks and present Gohan, as they both have access to their beast state. Present Gohan still struggles with it a little bit, since he doesn't have much time to train. Future Gohan, however, has always been behind them both, and the times he did access his beast state seem to have just been flukes. Piccolo's mission now is to help future Gohan gain that power and control it, so he can finally reach his full potential, but he can tell he's been very damaged. His times in the future timeline, as well as all of the years being in Netherworld, had severely hampered him. Even so, he believes in his student.
Two blasts came towards the two. Thankfully, because they were so relaxed, their keen senses alerted them to the energy blast, swiftly moving out of the way. What was shocking, though, was how they did not detect the sources of the blast. Suddenly, two figures began darting around, only appearing as shadows due to the dust and smoke. They were not giving off any key signature, just like two other foes they once knew. Piccolo could sense the anxiety coming from Gohan. He was definitely still hunted by his past. The Saiyan growled into Ultimate, shouting at Piccolo to get far away, unleashing a barrage of key blasts, hoping to hit one of them. The two gammas skillfully dodged and weaved, and unleashing a barrage of melee attacks. Piccolo and Gohan got clear views of their attackers, taking note of the red ribbon symbol. Piccolo argued that he needed to stay and fight with them, but Gohan replied, I let the Piccolo in my future die. I will not let the same thing happen here, pushing them all away from himself before flying upwards and out of the smoke. Yelling at them to come after him, the two androids, Gamma 1 and 2, smirked, knowing he was just baiting them. But they didn't care. They knew, after all, that Gohan was the one they needed to take care of. Demon King Piccolo was already hurt from their previous attacks, so they could finish him off at their leisure. Gohan flew until he was in a desolate area, attempting to power up into Beast, but it was no use. He still hadn't gotten it under control, faking calm confidence, he smirked at the two androids, daring them both to attack. This all reminded him of his upsetting past. How on earth could androids with such strength ever be created? Back to Piccolo, was dusting himself off before his phone began to ring. It was Videl to his surprise, and she quickly explained how she really needed him to pick up Pan from kindergarten. Before he could protest, Videl promised him a new Panenko plushie and hung up. Piccolo growled. The Namekian burst out from the ground and flew towards present Gohan's house, and shouted at him to get his ass out side and to follow him. Gohan, who was in the middle of some statistics, knew better than to make Piccolo wait, so he threw his gi on and flew after him. Piccolo gave him a brief rundown. They could sense future Gohan's ki beginning to wane, and once they were near the battlefield, they dropped from the sky and hid their ki. Future Gohan was kneeling on the floor, blood dripping down his forehead, barely keeping himself up. The two shark-like androids smirked as they floated upwards, a scene too similar to Gohan, as they began to rain down an onslaught of ki blast. Without hesitation, Gohan used instant transmission, a technique learned from the yard rat, teleporting himself to his counterpart, grabbing him and going back to Piccolo. The three of them hid their power levels and remained hidden as the androids admired their work. Gamma 1 dropped down into the crater left behind, searching for remains, while Gamma 2 whistled, commenting on how they did such a good job that there was nothing left. Gamma 1 wasn't really confident though, but there wasn't any other explanation on why he would be gone. They really were just that powerful, flying upwards and into the distance. The two Gohans readied themselves, but Piccolo told them to get to Korn's tower instead and get some sensu beans, then meet up with future Trunks for some backup. He told them to wait for his signal. The Namekian followed after the two androids, who were completely unaware of their uninvited guest and had been issued orders to return back to base. The two Gohans quickly teleported over to Korn's tower and took the only two sensu beans available. So future Gohan ate one and present Gohan tucked one away. Hopefully this will be enough. Afterwards, they teleported over to Capsule Corp, informing future Trunks on what occurred. Trunks was rightfully furious at Gohan. How could he do something so stupid as to lure two androids away and try to take them alone? There was clear pain in future Trunks' eyes. A pair of androids killed future Gohan long ago. He couldn't handle that happening again. Future Gohan knew his student was right, and he apologized, explaining how he needed to prove himself or something like that. I understand why you did that, Gohan, but you have to remember, you're not alone anymore. There's plenty of capable fighters who are more than willing to help you fight. Gohan was nearly moved to tears, since when had Trunks grown into such a smart adult? He smiled at his student and said a simple but sincere thank you. The moment was met with a rude interruption from an obnoxiously loud ringtone. Present Gohan shrieked. He answered the phone to an unhappy Videl, who asked him again to go and get her. She had asked Piccolo, but he was nowhere to be found. So Gohan did so with the instant transmission. Meanwhile, Piccolo has successfully made his way into the base. They were currently discussing how to go about getting the attention from the other Gohan, Piccolo, and finally future Trunks. Piccolo was a little taken aback by the fact that they seemed to be fully aware that there were two Gohans, but also that there's a future Trunks. This was highly concerning and made the Namekian worried. Listening to the small scientist talk about his creation, the doctor said that Cell Max still needed time to be programmed correctly, so he wouldn't just be a mindless monster, but that his physical components were nearly done, and that the key to their victory, the fuel stolen from Capsule Corp, was currently being inserted into Cell Max. The conversation shifted back to their next step, which was how they would go about and kidnap the daughter of President Gohan, using her as leverage to get his attention. Piccolo had heard enough. Stepping forward and 
and throwing his helmet off. Piccolo revealed himself to be the enemy. The Gammas were shocked at this. How could he have gotten past the security like that? And how could they have allowed him to follow them all the way back here? Magenta was furious. Piccolo smirked, If you want Son Gohan here, I'll get him for you. Ki erupted from the Namekian as he began to furiously power up, transforming into his ultimate form and creating a tremendous Ki signature. Both Gohans and Future Trunks felt the spike immediately, coming to the conclusion that this must be the signal he was talking about. Without thinking, present Gohan called over to the others, preparing to use instant transmission. However, at the very last second, he felt a tug on his leg. The next moment, they were in the room surrounded by Red Ribbon guards. Immediately, the short man ordered the guards to open fire at the intruders. Present Gohan panicked, bursting into ultimate as he realized that Pan had tagged along. While they were all discussing what to do, Pan kept complaining over and over again that she wanted to join in. Present Gohan had told her to just go away, but she clearly didn't listen. Future Trunks transformed into Beast, while Future Gohan used Ultimate. The guards opened fire, while the Gammas protected those in charge. Piccolo, the two Gohans, and Trunks easily deflected all the bullets, and within seconds, they incapacitated all the soldiers. Dr. Hedo, Magenta, and Carmine fled from the room. Gohan put down Pan, telling her in a very stern voice to stay right behind him and not leave his side. The poor girl nodded. The fighters darted all around the room, punching, kicking, and firing key blasts everywhere. The building began to sustain more and more damage causing it to shake and crumble around them. In a moment that surprised pretty much everyone, not only did future Gohan stop to stop a pillar from falling on the soldiers, but so did Gamma 1. Above that, Gamma 2 saved Pam from falling debris. Present Gohan was about to fire a blast at the Gamma, but he gently let her down telling her to run away. They were heroes after all. Even though these two Gammas are stronger than in the original, Gamma 1 did end up losing to Ultimate Gohan in Superhero. And with the two Gohans working in sync, it's only logical to think that they would come out on top, especially with the addition of Beast Trunks and Ultimate Piccolo. Trunks and Piccolo were currently engaged in battle against Gamma 2, while the two Gohans handled Gamma 1. The fight shifted outside. Both sides had a weird feeling about the other. The Gammas were under the assumption that they were the good guys and the ones in the right, while the Z Fighters were fighting things thinking that they were the evil ones. President Gohan addressed this, asking them why they were trying to take over the world, but Gamma 1 responded, stating that they must be mistaken, as they were in fact the ones who were the vile organization intent on taking over the planet. Piccolo butted in, asking them how they were the good guys when their plan consisted of kidnapping a four-year-old girl. Both Gammas halted their attacks, as they genuinely thought this over. Gamma 2 was stumped, but Gamma 1 insisted that it was for the greater good, and that no harm would ever come to the girl. Neither of the two Gohans were happy with that answer, and Black stood at them. The Gamma's resolve was starting to waver at this point, and it fully broke down completely when they witnessed Carmine open fire at all of them, but specifically at Pan, who managed to skillfully dodge all of the attacks and take him down in the process. The Gamma's lowered their weapons, and the Z fighters began to explain their side, confused as what they must have been told. Gamma 2 hung his head in shame, upset that they were lied to about the enemy. Gamma 1 was more annoyed at Magenta. They both knew Dr. Hedo had good intentions as they were programmed to be superheroes, but they felt like fools now. Future Trunks and Future Gohan were a little apprehensive about their sudden change in heart, but present Gohan trusted the both of them. As he pointed out that androids 17 and 18 could change, if they could then why not these two? They protected Pan, they saved the soldiers, they didn't need to do that. Future Gohan was harder to convince, given the history with the Red Ribbon androids. Just looking at that symbol made him shiver, nevertheless he had to agree to a truce, though he stayed far away from the androids. While they were talking this over, Magenta fled over to sell Max's incubator. Dr. Hedo chased after him like in the original and took care of Magenta, but not before he could release the incomplete Cell Max. Cell Max's gathered data is of higher quality. This is a more formidable foe for our heroes to handle. We'll be back with more after this. Hello everyone, I hope you're enjoying the video thus far. If you like this sort of content and want to see more and support the channel, then consider becoming a Patreon. There, you can help support the channel through various tiers while getting some perks of your own. As a Patreon, you will help get the videos out faster, fun thumbnail art, editing, and even writing for videos. Plus, you get some neat perks like early access to videos such as this one and more. So be sure to go to patreon.com slash smugstick and consider supporting the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video.
No. As the Z fighters and the Gammas came together in mutual understanding, a ship landed down near the ruined base. Outside jumped Krillin, 18, Goten, and Trunks, who were in their superhero outfits, and a very concerned Bulma carrying Bra. She had contacted the boys, worried not only about the Gohan's Trunks and Piccolo, but also about the fact that she thought she lost Pan. She looked for her all over the place. When Trunks got home, he was able to find her by sensing her key. And here we are. The kids were a little disappointed that the reinforcements got there so late. Present Gohan smiled and thanked Bulma anyways. Pin and Bra went around searching for Gohan's glasses, while the two Gammas looked at Saiyaman X1 and 2. They exchanged details on their poses and special techniques. However, the ground started to shake and a massive explosion was heard. Smoke and fire could be seen from afar and a small ship appeared. The Gammas looked over to see that it was none other than their creator fleeing from the site. Shouting and warning everyone to run away, they put two and two together and figured that Magenta had panicked and set Cell Max free. Piccolo, the two Gohans, Future Gohan and Gamma 2, stood before the others, protecting them all from the shockwaves of the explosion. Future Trunks told his mother to take Bra and Pan and leave far away. The Z fighters all watched in horror as the gigantic cell-like creature rose up. The power it was giving off was nothing short of terrifying. The appearance of the bees was similar to semi-perfect cell, only 1,000 times the size and somehow even more disgusting. Wasting no time, the two Gohans rushed forward, bursting into ultimate at the same time and blasted at the creature. Boma hurried towards the ship, carrying the two children. Gamma 1 placed down Dr. Hedo, then alongside Gamma 2, joined in the fight. Goten and Trunks fist bumped and flew after, while 18 looked genuinely frightened. Curling figure she was probably thinking about Cell all those years ago. The battles intensified as the android suddenly released a devastatingly destructive and blinding attack reminiscent of purple lasers. The fighters weaved in and out, barely dodging the beams. The beast lasers died down and he set his sight on present Gohan, who was still tired from the earlier battle. He let out a blood-curling roar and then rushed to the hybrid warrior, throwing a punch at him and sending him flying backwards into the ruins. Piccolo, Future Trunks, and Future Gohan began raining down a barrage of key blasts. Cell simply swatted them away before attacking them too. The others helped, though they were causing little damage. Our heroes were losing ground. Cell Max felt like he was basically indestructible, and all of his attacks had the power to take out any of the Z fighters if they hit just right. It was a life and death battle, and our heroes knew it. Goten and Trunks looked at both of the Gammas, getting into a superhero pose and declaring their victory over Cell Max. President Gohan facepalmed, realizing that that's what he must have looked like all those years ago. He then burst out his aura and nodded at Piccolo. One after another, the Z fighters attacked. Up first was the Gammas, rushing towards the beast, enveloping themselves with blue and red aura. Using most of their energy reserves, they ripped through the monster's left arm. Right after came Goten and Trunks' attack, swirling together to release their ultimate Saiyan attack. Their technique hit Cell Max head on, slightly fracturing his head dome. Krillin unleashed the Kienzan, which was followed by a powerful Ki Blast courtesy of 18. The devastating Key Blast hit one of the wings of the beast, and the two of them kicked it at the point of impact, cracking it into two, rendering the beast flightless. Finally, the two Gohans burst out their auras, powering up all the way into the pinnacle of their ultimate forms. Piccolo followed suit, and finally, Future Trunks rose along with them in his beast form. The four of them rushed at the android, flying around the kaiju, blasting at him with Kamehameha's, Masenko's, and special beam cannons, as well as unleashing their various melee combos. The beast was finally pushed back, causing him to fall down the hole he crawled out of. Then the entire team unleashed a relentless onslaught of key blast until they couldn't hear any more of the creature's roars. Smoke rose up from the pit and a haunting silence befell the battlefield. Was it over? Just as Krilling was about to congratulate everyone, a blood curling scream was heard yet again and a weird blue flash appeared before them and from it the android. He punched them all directly, launching them backwards into the rubble, punching them in the exact same way this battle had begun. Not only that, though he was damaged, his wing seemed to be back. Trunks pushed himself up, looking forward, and once again seeing the behemoth seemingly teleport around and race towards them all. But it didn't look like simple teleportation. Every time Cell Max did this, he glowed a blue color, making sounds very familiar to future Trunks. The battle continued, with present Gohan and future Trunks coming together, continuing to power up more and more. To present Gohan just seeing Cell's face like that, the person who caused his father to die, who killed Trunks in the first place, it made his blood boil. 
present Gohan burst into his beast form. He had trouble getting into it, as he hadn't really been training it, unlike future Trunks. But at this moment, with Cell right in front of him, he was able to tap into it once more. Together with future Trunks, they fired a twin blast at Cell. It burst through his chest, as he fell back once more. But just as they thought they had once again beaten him, Cell Max reappeared, throwing a punch directly at them, just like the beginning of the fight. He was hurt a little more than before, but the hole in his chest was cleared. As he continued to glow blue, the same sound ringing out. Trunks didn't know what was going on. Piccolo, Gohan, and future Gohan were the only ones left standing at the front lines. Together, they fired a combined special beam cannon that once again seemed to pierce the monster. Perhaps what they needed was to annihilate him to the last atom, as it completely consumed him. But once again, that same blue glow appeared. That same sound. That same punch. That's when it struck Trunks. As he watched the spots on Cell Max's body, they glowed a blue color. There were bubbles within it, as if he was filled with a liquid. That liquid was the fuel from the time machine. Trunks flew over to Dr. Hedo and shook him awake, asking him what they used for Cell Max. How did they get the liquid for the time machine? Dr. Hedo was barely awake, but terrified at Trunks. He explained how the Red Ribbon Army had been surveying them all for quite a while, and they were fully aware of their time machine. So much so that Capsule Corp always had time machine fuel ready just in case, and the Red Ribbon Army had stolen quite a bit of it. Gamma One pulled Trunks away from Dr. Heddle. It was clear Trunks was very upset. Gamma One told him that they didn't have time to argue about this. They just need to figure out a way to defeat Cell Max. More than angry at the Red Ribbon, Trunks was upset at himself. How could they have been so oblivious and allowed something like this to happen? Trunks was violently snapped out of it by Cell Max teleporting before the group. 18 pushed forward, creating an android barrier around herself as the monster unleashed a deadly mouth beam at point blank range. Krillin screamed out for his wife, telling her that Marin needed her, but it was Piccolo who got there first, pushing 18 out of the way as the Namekian opened up his arms and took the blast. He remained in place, expanding his energy and deflecting it just enough to shield the group. Both present Gohan and future Gohan called out for their master. They couldn't go through with losing him again, but Piccolo only smirked as his Aura burst open, enveloping them all with an orange glow. A bright light shone out from his back, far up to the sky, as he fired the strongest special beam cannon he's ever created. The group opened their eyes to see the intact Piccolo. He was not only orange, but even larger than he is normally. Cell Max had fallen to the ground before them, a giant hole through his chest. Everyone was in shock. No one knew the Namekians could undergo transformations like this. Both Gohans congratulated him before looking down at their foe. Trunks walked forward, telling everyone that he had a bad feeling about this. This, once more, the beast rose. Cell Max roared, enveloping himself entirely within a blue glow. His body was twitching, and he was genuinely terrifying. He blipped around, in and out of reality, as he charged at the tired Z fighters. Piccolo reached into his pocket, pulled out the sensor bean, and handed it to Trunks, telling him that if anyone could put down this beast, it was him. Reminded by Krillin about the 23rd Budokai, Piccolo began to grow, before charging straight towards Cell Max. He lunged at him, tackling the beast to the ground. Trunks quickly ate the bean, then burst his aura open, powering up into the pinnacle of beast form. Piccolo continued to try to hold the beast down. He was able to teleport in and out of time and space. Piccolo was dragged along with him as the beast continued, but that wouldn't be enough to stop Trunks. With President Gohan's help, he was able to track and follow the monster, thanks to his instant transmission ability. It was obvious that it took at least a little bit of time for Cell Max to use his ability. So once they teleported above the beast, Trunks released his full power heat dome attack down towards the monster. As soon as he launched it, Gohan teleported Piccolo out of the way, a huge explosion erupted over the battlefield as the android was engulfed in the red blast. There was no way he could have survived that, but suddenly the beast was back, unscathed, but the frustrated trunks kept releasing blasts over and over again. It was never ending. Cell Max was turning back his own time, returning every time he was defeated. It was an endless loop, and it was unclear which one would give out first. Trunks' hair stood on end once more, and a faint blue glow surrounded him. Trunks tried to think of what to do. He had time traveled so much, but never faced someone who used time itself. Effectively, Cell Max had been turned into a time machine itself. Future Gohan could see his students struggling. He was giving it his all, but this creature was something they have never faced before. But if its powers were tied to time travel, Future Gohan told Trunks that he'd be right back. Trunks met his eyes and instantly trusted his master. Whatever it was, it could work. In an instant, Future Gohan burst towards Capsule Corp, recovered something, and turned back. Future Gohan reached into his pocket, taking out a capsule and throwing it to the side. The time machine appeared from within it. While Piccolo and present Gohan continue fighting Cell Max, 
Trunks retreated, asking what the hell Future Gohan was doing. Future Gohan explained his reasoning. You said that monster is using time travel, right? Well, think about it, Trunks. We have that power too. We've been doing it forever. If we launch the time machine against Cell Max, just as it time travels, perhaps we'll get rid of the monster. Pan watched as Future Trunks and Future Gohan talked, but it was clear that there was sadness in their eyes. Without asking, she jumped out of the window from the ship, reaching down towards Future Gohan, as Bulma had no option but to travel down with Bra. Pan asked what they were doing, and even though Future Gohan tried to lie to her, it was clear that the girl already knew. Future Gohan had made up his mind, and he was going to risk his life. The little girl begged him not to go, that he wouldn't know what to do without him. But future Gohan placed a hand on her head. Hey, it's okay. I'll be back, I'm sure. Plus, you have another great Gohan right here. I'm sure he'll guide you better than I ever could. The two of them turned back to look at present Gohan fighting Cell Max alongside Piccolo, smiling. Gohan looked at Trunks, saying that this was a risk he was willing to take. Trunks argued against it. He should be the one to do it. Gohan smiles at Trunks with a kind expression. You've already sacrificed enough for all of us, Trunks. It's clear that this battle is not one to be won through sheer strength. You've learned well, Trunks. You've done all you can with this monster and protected everyone at the same time. Now let me, as your master, finish the job. I leave everything to you, Trunks. The past and the future. It's yours to protect. It always has been. Future Gohan entered the time machine and readied it. The engines began humming as Trunks yelled at Gohan and Piccolo to hold down Cell Max, going in to help. But before he could, Bulma landed, picking up Pan. Trunks turned to her, telling her about Future Gohan's plan. She concurred that there was a possibility it would work, but that the most likely scenario is that Gohan would die. Trunks turned back to try to stop Gohan, but the time machine was already mid-flight. Trunks watched with tears in his eyes. Gohan and Piccolo kept firing their blast at Cell Max from a distance. If Trunks couldn't stop his master, at the very least, he had to make sure he had a clean shot. Trunks himself began firing blasts alongside the Gammas, keeping Cell Max in place. But Trunks watched as with tears in his eyes, a bright blue explosion burst right before his eyes. Trunks was in shock. He couldn't move as Gamma 2 rushed forward, throwing himself over him to protect him from the devastating blast that shook the earth. When everyone looked back to where Cell Max was, was, they were met with an empty crater. No signs of the monster, nor of the time machine. They were gone. In its place were things displaced through time, some which the Z Fighters recognized, others which they didn't. Trunks cried as present Gohan went over to comfort him, telling him that he knows his other self wouldn't be happy to see Trunks so distraught over this heroic sacrifice. But Trunks never wanted future Gohan to sacrifice himself for his sake again. This was his fault. If only he had paid attention to the time liquid, this wouldn't have happened. But Piccolo interrupted, telling him that future Gohan was his own man that made his own decisions. He could never live a normal life like Trunks. Trunks. Sacrificing himself was likely one of the only ways future Gohan found it okay to go. Either way, it was a time machine. If future Gohan was anywhere, he could be in future Trunks' future. Trunks wiped tears from his eyes, filled with a little bit of hope and resolve. Realizing that Piccolo was right, he promised himself to rebuild a time machine and find Gohan. He couldn't believe that he was dead. That's the one thing he would never let himself believe. The battle was over. Dr. Hedo and Gamma 2 were rushed to Capsule Corp, where they were healed up. Just like the original, Dr. Hedo began working at Capsule Corp, this time with both Gammas. Bulma and Trunks began fixing up the old time machine they still had, and by the end of summer, it was ready. Broly talked to Trunks about what future Gohan said, and Trunks fulfilled his master's promise. Future Trunks took Broly to present Gohan, who was surprised at first, but knew exactly who they were talking about. Gohan took the other two to reunite with his long-lost friend. He took a great liking to Broly almost immediately who clearly had a way with animals. Trunks smiled, thinking about how he'll tell future Gohan all about this when he sees him again. The day for Trunks to leave and hopefully find Gohan came. Tears were shed and Trunks said his farewells, though he promised them that he would be back. Even so, for some reason, the goodbyes felt a lot harder to say this time. While waving to his family, Trunks returned to the future. The time and space energy around him swirled with much more intensity than usual. Something was going on. Did he use diesel instead of regular? But as he was trying to figure out what was wrong, a bright light came out of nowhere, blinding him for a few seconds. When the light faded, he found himself in a vast, terrarium-like room. It was filled with grass, a small river, and in the center, a large tree and a building. 
Hopping out of the time machine, he looked around, completely confused. Suddenly, a voice came from behind, calling him out. At first, Trunks hoped that it was Gohan, but it was obvious that it was a high-pitched, girly voice. He turned back to see someone walking out of the building. A small Kai? So you're the one who's been giving me a headache all this time. What do you have to say for yourself? I should really inform the Galactic Patrol. At first, I thought, sure, I'll let you save your future. But you just kept going back and forth in time. Then you revived that Gohan guy, and then you and your friends caused a massive explosion in time and space. You're gonna have to help me, you know. I have something better in mind given your skills. Trunks couldn't even get a word in as the small woman rattled on and on. The future warrior cleared his throat and asked where he was. She huffed and puffed, then explained how this was the Timeness, and she was the Supreme Kai of Time, who oversees all of time and space, and that he was in big trouble this time. Trunks had no idea how to respond to this, but she smiled kindly before asking, You don't really have a say in the matter, but how would you like to join the Time Patrol, Trunks? He had no idea how to answer this question, but perhaps this is exactly what he needed. He already doubted that he would find Gohan in the future. This was his chance to find him somewhere else. I don't know what this is about, but if you want my help, and you really are the Supreme Kai of Time, I want you to tell me one thing. Is my Gohan alive? We see a dark room with crystal shards showing various fights between Gohan and Cells through different timelines. As we pull back from one of them, we hear the growl of Cell. But not just any Cell, Cell Max. He was trying to use his ability over and over again, glowing blue, but nothing was going on. Half his body was completely decimated, and in front of him stood Gohan, completely calm. Neither of them had any idea where they were, but seeing Cell like this confirmed to Gohan that it worked. Perhaps they were in a place between time and space, and without time, Cell Max couldn't use his ability. With a smirk on his face, future Gohan burst into beast. I guess you're the Cell I need to kill then, huh? You know, I never got to fight Cell, so I guess this is my turn now. Well, come on then. I don't have all the time in the world, you know. Future Gohan begins to charge a giant Masenko directed at Cell's head crystal. From the corner of his eye, Future Gohan could see a crystal that showed Trunks in a new outfit, getting inside a new time machine. You've saved me many times before, Trunks. I know you can do it again. Come on, Cell. Let's finish this. I'll show you how much of a fight I can put up, even just by myself. Masenko! Hello everyone, I hope you enjoyed the ending of What If Future Trunks Stayed in the Past. This was perhaps one of the toughest series I've had to work on because of various issues during production, but at the very least, I think the ending made it worth it. I really liked what we did with it. The full story will be out in a few weeks and I'm gonna make a few changes here and there to up the production value and make sure that everything is in order. This one was edited by Ragme who did an amazing job and it was written by my girlfriend Novaria DB and myself, so be sure to follow her on Twitter. A brand new series, What If Piccolo Got His Potential Unlocked Early, will be coming out soon, so be sure to be on the lookout for it. And if you want a new full story, I just released What If Broly Was Found By The Kaioshin. As always, a huge thank you to the supporters of the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.